Hello. Among several naval officers who became household names and national heroes is the rather splendidly named Cloud Le Chauvel. And I am guessing at the pronunciation because we simply don't know how he said his name. He was christened Cloudsley after his maternal grandmother, Lucy Cloudsley. He was one of three sons born into a Norfolk family of modest means. His father died when he was an infant and at the age of 13 or 14, he joined the Royal Navy as a cabin boy. Under the watchful eye of a relative, Admiral Sir Christopher Mings, he began his rise through the ranks to become Admiral of the Fleet, MP for Rochester and a popular public figure before meeting a tragic end and leaving an intriguing mystery. In terms of opportunities for action and adventure, the late 17th century was not a bad time to be in the Royal Navy. As a cabin boy, he made voyages to the West Indies and South America and keen to progress, applied himself to the study of navigation. A good seaman and popular crew member, by the age of 22, he was a midshipman, at that time still a senior rating, not the rank of a junior commissioned officer. He saw action against the Dutch at the Battle of Sol Bay off Southwold in 1672, and later that year was promoted to master's mate, a senior petty officer position equivalent to a sub-lieutenant today, serving on HMS Henrietta at the Battle of Texel in 1673. Promotion to second lieutenant followed and a Mediterranean expedition against Barbary pirates. Transferring to HMS Harwich, he led successful attacks in 1676 on Corsair strongholds at Tripoli and along the Barbary coast, earning an £80 reward from his commander, Rear Admiral John Narborough, and a gold medal from King Charles. The rapid rise continued. 1677, first lieutenant on HMS Plymouth, and six months later, at the age of 27, his first command as captain of the 32-gun HMS Sapphire. Almost a decade of operations in the Mediterranean followed, serving on several ships before taking charge of the 72-gun HMS Edgar in 1689, and taking part in the Battle of Bantry Bay off the southern coast of Ireland. Although the fleet failed to prevent the French Navy landing supplies in support of James II's attempt to regain the throne, Chauvel distinguished himself in the action and was subsequently knighted by William of Orange. In 1690, Chauvel commanded the ships carrying King William and his army to campaign in Ireland. Promoted to Rear Admiral later that year, he was on the losing side against the French fleet at the Battle of Beachy Head, but British naval pride was restored with victories at Barfleur and La Hogue in 1692. In command of HMS Prince at La Hogue, Chauvel was first to break the enemy lines and was wounded in his thigh. A year before he had married Lady Elizabeth Narborough, widow of his former commanding officer. Lady Elizabeth had two sons who followed their father and stepfather and joined the Navy. Cloudsley and Elizabeth lived at May Place, Crayford, then in Kent, now a borough of South East London, and had two daughters. May Place was damaged in World War II and demolished after a fire in 1959. In 1695, Chauvel was elected MP for Rochester and became a significant benefactor in the area, paying for the restoration of Crayford Parish Church, dedicated St Paul Linus, for decorative ceilings in Rochester's Guildhall, now a museum, and for a bell, clock and improvements to Rochester Market and later Corn Exchange. As Commissioner for the Sewers, he was also responsible for maintaining the Thames Embankment from Deptford to Gravesend. In 1702, at the beginning of the War of the Spanish Succession, Chauvel fought alongside Sir George Rook at the Battle of Vigo Bay and took part in the seizure of Gibraltar in 1704. As Admiral of the Fleet, he besieged and captured Barcelona in 1705. Further success against the French in the Channel made Cloudsley Chauvel 
a favourite of Queen Anne. A stellar career reached its peak in 1706 with his appointment as Commander-in-Chief of the British fleet. And then tragedy. Returning with the fleet to England in 1707, Clowsley Chauville's ship, the 90-gun HMS Association, struck rocks off the Isles of Scilly and sank within three or four minutes. 800 lives were lost. A further 1,200 men died aboard HMS Eagle, HMS Romney and HMS Firebrand, who also ran aground. Prime cause was the navigational problem of accurately calculating longitude. Clockmaker John Harrison would not provide the solution until 1730. An unconfirmed story, told by Davis Sobel in Longitude, her 1995 book on Harrison's breakthrough, alleges a sailor warned the fleet was off course and was hanged from the yardarm charged with inciting mutiny. But this doesn't fit with Chauvel's reputation as an easygoing and popular commander. Cloudly Chauvel's body, together with the bodies of both his stepsons and a pet dog, were discovered the day after the ships went down, washed up at Porthalic Cove on St Mary's, some seven miles from the scene of the wreck. This suggests they'd managed to leave the ship in one of its small boats and then drowned trying to reach the shore. They were buried on the beach, but Queen Anne ordered the body of Sir Cloudesley be brought back to London, where a state funeral was held before interment in Westminster Abbey. There is a large memorial, sculpted by Grinling Gibbons in the south aisle of the Abbey. A small memorial was later erected at Porthalic Cove. By the early 18th century, the Royal Navy was fully professionalised and vital to the protection of Britain's mercantile interests. Nevertheless, in peacetime it remained a candidate for economies. There were few ships in commission when war against Spain broke out in 1739 beginning with the War of Jenkins' Ear, before being swept up in the wider war of the Austrian succession. The business of Jenkins' Ear and the War of the Austrian succession will be my topics next time. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.